The first thing I want us to know is that the Bible is counterintuitive and countercultural. Did you get that? Yes. This word, you can read it from morning to evening. If the Holy Spirit does not enlighten your mind, you've just been reading words. But when the Holy Spirit enlightens you, it becomes a different book. It goes against the grain of your brains. It goes against the, against the grain of what the world thinks. Will you say amen? amen. Can I prove it to you? Yes. Let us go to James 1, 2 to 4. James 1, 2 to 4. As our text verse. Listen to this very quickly. Can we all read maybe? Yeah. Okay, good. Let's go. Thank you so much. What is the address? What does it say? Yes. And sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity. Wow! Hey! How can trouble come my way and it's an opportunity for me to? That, isn't that counterintuitive? Isn't that countercultural? No, when something bad happens to you, you should be sad. I told you a story of a lady in, in uh, Texas. The hurricane came and blew off many roofs. But this lady was seen on a car porch, sitting in a rocking chair, right? And the neighbor said, what? Ma'am, do you know your roof? He said, yeah, I know my roof is off. But I have the joy of the Lord. That's the way all of us need to become. That when troubles come, we embrace it with joy. Say from today... I will embrace all my trials, all my tests, and temptations with joy. Why would that happen? Why, why would you embrace it? Let's read. Go. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be strong in character and ready for anything. My God! Character is the only thing you and I will take to heaven. Our diplomas, our status, our finances, you will leave them here. When, when a child is coming to the world, does a child come with things? No. Please respond. Does a child come with things? No. When you see some, how many people have seen somebody buried here? Have you seen them bury them with diplomas and all of that? The only thing you take from this side of heaven to the other is your character. And that's the glory character. And that character is being tested through test, through trials, through persecution, through temptation. Do we now know why? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Faith is fundamental gift. When we'll be talking about, in the next series, which will start next month, it's talking about your ship, S-H-A-P-E. The first is the spiritual gift. I'll tell you the six most significant gifts that you are giving when you become a child of God. You know what? The fundamental, one of them is faith. Faith is fundamental because as my partner will share with us, Second Peter 1, 5 and 8 is not on the screen. Very quickly. Listen to it. Read to eight, if you can. All right. But okay. also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith ah. virtue. What are we adding to our faith? Virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To what? Virtue. Add what? Knowledge. Next. Knowledge, self-control. To knowledge, what? Self-control. Self Next. To perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? Amen. That is a fundamental passage. It's one of the six core gifts that you receive. You cannot get it from school. You can't get it by working hard. It's a gift from God. When somebody gives something, right? Yesterday I was bought a pen. 
uh, by my all my children this pen it always has ink in it always it never dries out will you say amen with me amen. did i do anything to my children yes. just yes. that Well, I did my duty as a dad, right? right? But I'm so grateful. Generally, a gift is given not because you do something, but a gift is usually given because somebody does it from their heart. Yes. All right. So, there are seven things there. You have goodness added to faith, knowledge, self-control or temperance, or even temperedness, perseverance, godliness, kindness, and finally, love does what? binds all of these together so love is not the first love is the seventh quick comes in to take all of them together the first is faith that's what you lay as a foundation faith is your total trust in a person and that person is who the lord jesus tell somebody my faith is built on one person the lord jesus christ Okay, let's continue. Next slide, please. Overview. These are key things I want you to know. Note. Can we all read that? Go. We live in a sin-ridden, broken, demon-infested, morally bankrupt world. It, was, it wasn't like that from the beginning. Is that true? Now, on Wednesday, we'll get, a little bit, we'll get more into this. But very quickly, God created a garden and put man and a woman and gave him everything and said have control take over like you buy your son a car or you buy your son a house or buy said you don't come and take that house back take control and man messed up man rebelled and once he rebelled god put a curse listen to this on the devil on mankind and everything on earth now listen to this. The air we breathe is foul air. The water we drink is not pure water. Everything on this planet is cursed because the man who made it cursed it. That's where we live in. That's the reality. That's why it's a sin sick. What is it again? Broken, demon infested. In fact, the Bible says the God of this world is the ruler of of this age let's continue morally bankrupt <laughs> what can we talk about morals when a young man says i'm a, i'm a trans <laughs> what is going on what is going on morally bankrupt okay that's what we exist in now but the good news you want to hear the good news God decided to come himself. Not send somebody. This is an angel. God came in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. What did he do? He came principally to die on this cross. He took the curse that he put on mankind and everything that you have. Everything that you see. He took that curse which he had given. Look, in the world when somebody curses you, especially a relative, that curse, only that person can take away the curse. Amen? Amen? We'll give examples on Wednesday. But he took that curse. Listen carefully. This is very important. He put that curse where? Please, he put that curse where? He put that curse where? All right. Number two. He took our sin debt and put it on. Put it on. He put it on himself. And later did what on the cross? He died. Three things. Don't forget these things. He took the curse, put it on the cross. He took our sin debt, put it on himself, and he died. He died in the place of every solitary single human being. Did we get that? Yes. Those are things to write down. Write. Those are very important things. Now, let me tell you why I want us to get this. When your child goes to school, when you went to school, why did you get notebooks? To take notes. Why do we come to church and then we just sit and then it, oh, the someone has gone, that's fine. Why do we do that? 
you take what you will, will end here seriously, but what is for eternity, we just take it lightly. So, today we are raising intentional what? Christians. Raise your right hand up. From today, Lord, I will be an intentional Christian. In Jesus' name. Can we continue? Yes. Okay. As Christians, we cannot overcome our trials and tests and temptations in our own ability using human resources. Can we get the, the, the first slide? You see it now, the first slide. Why we said you cannot? No. That's it. A word, um, a picture speaks a thousand words. Amen? Amen? I want you to write down somewhere. If you were asked, what is that guy doing? Can he do it? No. You people who are just listening, Pearl and the rest, can he do it? Can he push that thing? No. I says, no, he cannot. No, is there any human being who can push that? No. no. If you want to address your trials, your temptations, and your persecution by yourself, that's it. I hope everybody understands in Jesus' name. Yeah. So we will cease struggling with our minds. We'll do it. It doesn't work. So let that picture that be mental and let, let it take... A good effect. Okay. Instead, we use spiritual weapons. What are the two major spiritual weapons that God has given us? Two. The sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. And where do we get power from? From the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, quickly there, instead we use spiritual weapons. The two spiritual weapons God has given us, the word of God and the spirit of God. The word of God and the spirit of God. Our total dependence should be on the power of the Holy Spirit and our dogged belief in the word of God which tells us to obey God how? Promptly. Listen, if when my kids were growing up and I said, bring daddy's shoes. Say, oh daddy, I want to play cards first. What will I do to them? I will scream at them. I ask you to bring my shoes. You say you are playing cards. Come on, kid. Who's 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 in command here? You or me? Now, can I plead with you? If we say we fear God, and we do the four things, is there a command to obey? Is there um, um, a promise to? to to claim. Is there a sin to convert? Sin to convert. What last one? What? Is there a verse to memorize? Please, let's get these things working. This is so important. More than all of your PhDs. No, this one. It lasts forever. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's be intentional Christians. I plead with you. All right. What are spiritual weapons? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 5, it's not on the screen, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. Did you hear that? Yeah. On the contrary, they have divine power. The word of God, the spirit of God have what? Divine power. Remember, it is the spirit of God that spoke the word of God. Those are the two things. Is that simple enough? Yeah. Thank you. And it has divine power to demolish strongholds in the mind in the mind. We'll see that later on. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and take captive or prisoner every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Will you say amen? amen. Okay. Let's continue. Now we want to get into the meat of the lesson. Very quickly. We will highlight three major sources of trials, tests, and temptations and provide you with three biblical strategies to overcome them. Amen. Is there anything hard here? No. All right. Can we all remember that? We've seen this many times. 
we have a mind the old mind that we have the old mind that we have is a bad mind it's a dirty mind it's a rubbish mind it's called a carnal mind we all inherited from satan from um, adam amen your parents pass it on to you and on to others so we have that mind that mind produces things that are horrible pastor or somebody has a mic quickly can you read for us that mind what it produces very quickly very quickly very quickly yes amen Now, I want you to take one thing. Tell yourself, I have a sin factory in me. It is called the carnal nature, the sinful mind, and self. Thank you. It's, it's in you. There's no, you can't escape it. And as a factory, as a factory, a factory produces what it's meant to produce, right? If you go to, when I went to Germany many years ago to preach, my, board, my uh, host took me to a Mercedes-Benz factory. It's like a village. You have to have a little car to take you to each port until the car is produced. It's known as a Mercedes-Benz factory. You and I have a factory in us. That factory is found, what's the address of the factory? Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 say it with me galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 say it one more time galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 we all have it but listen to this the way you become a christian god gives you a new mind that mind is called what the mind of christ also called what the mind of the father is also called what the mind of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? Yes. It's they just the Bible just decided to choose to call it by one of the persons of the Trinity. It's the same mind, the mind of Christ, the mind of the Father, the mind of the Holy Spirit. Same mind. They don't have three minds. Will you say amen? amen? It is given to you as a gift the day you receive, receive Christ. We'll, we'll get into that when we study sheep. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Then we have uh, the systems of the world. The systems of the world, we'll talk about them. That is the way people who are not believers think. Somebody sent me a video, which I will not get into because of time. And the video talks about how the white man has blinded the black man by with the strategies of enslaving them and getting progress and so on. So I told the young man, uh, let him call me today afterwards. We'll talk about that video. The first definition is God. Who is God? Because he was talking about the black man God and the white man God. And when you hear all this kind of nonsense, these are people who cannot think correctly. You know, they can't think correctly. So one of my sons has warned me that when I'm in the debate, Dad, don't. So I have to be very careful. You don't define my God. I define the God myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we continue? And then we have Satan. We went through this with a number of sermons. Please go to our website or YouTube and you get the sermons there. Let's continue. Amen? Amen? Now, I want to take each one in turn. How do we overcome our sinful, our carnal, and our sin factory? You want to know that? Yes. I will not go far away. I want to bring to you a man who wrote 13 of these books, 13 of the books in the Bible. He's called Paul. He wants to give you an x-ray of his life. How he struggled through trials, temptations, and so on. Amen? Amen. And the singular passage is found in Romans 7, 8, 21 to 23. 
Is it legible? Okay, get ready. Go. But sin, seizing the opportunity by the commandment produced in me all manner of what? Evil desire. So sin produces in us what kind of desires? What kind of desires? Evil. My sin factory, my sin factory produces evil desires. No good desires. You've seen it. Okay, number two. Let, let's see what Paul said. Go. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. Where is that evil right there with me? Not outside. Mm. Read verse 22. For in my inner being, I delight God, God's law. Now, this is the, cr the crazy part of it. Go. But I see another law at work in my members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, huh? and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. Soul everywhere. Have we gotten it? Are we happy? Very good. How do you overcome it now? You have seen this chart before. How do you call the chart? A linear continuum for spiritual fruitfulness or for spiritual growth or for character development in Christ. Same thing. Amen? Amen. Do we understand this? Yes. What is at the center now? Read it for me. Go. The key. All battles, whether they are spiritual or physical, are fought and won or lost in the mind. Give you an example. If something tells me to go and visit somebody, and I say to myself, mm, I'm not going. Where did it come from? Because from the mind, it goes to your thoughts. Mind goes to thoughts. It goes in that linear form until it takes you to the end. Please snap this picture, and each of you should promise yourself you'll preach this to somebody. This is the key to life. This one. God gave it to New Life Fellowship. Go to all books you won't find it anywhere. It's God's grace. Amen? Amen? We have said we're going to be what? Intentional Christians. Right? Yes. Okay. Now, the linear continuum for spiritual fruitfulness, spiritual growth, character development, all of these things. Now, it starts first with the, when you have negative thoughts, ideas, suggestions, imaginations, dreams, and visions come to you. Amen? What do you do? We'll see it later on. It comes to your mind and then your mind produces thoughts. Your thoughts produce attitudes. Attitudes produce behavior, whether they're conversation or conduct. Your behavior produces habits. Habits, remember what we talked about character? That is what you take where? That's the thing you take to heaven, your character. Not your money, not your accolades, nothing. And finally, you get to your destination. Okay, let's go to how we overcome our sinful carnal or sin factory habits. All the solutions of mankind are found in one person. Who is that? There, you look at the board. Where are they found? Now, you ask me, why in Christ? It's in Christ because the Bible says in Colossians 2.9, it's not up there, Colossians 2.9, in Christ, the fullness of God lives in a human body. Let me repeat that. In Christ, what? The fullness of God lives in a human body. When Christ had a human body, the fullness of God lived in, who is that fullness? The fullness of the Father, the fullness of the Spirit, and Himself, right? The three. They all live in one person. The fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in one person, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why our solutions are where? In Christ. Amen? Now, so we know that the mind is where the problem is. How do we renew the mind? How do we renew the mind? I gave you two verses there. Uh, Romans 12, 2 and Ephesians 4, 23. You can read that at home. On Wednesday, we'll read those verses. But that teaches you how 
you reject and replace. You reject and replace. What do you reject? Thoughts, ideas, suggestions, imaginations that are negative. What do you replace with Philippians 4 8, which is the mind of God? Philippians 4 8, the mind of God. Philippians 4 8, you replace what is true, what is noble, what's just, what's right, etc., etc. Will you say amen with me? Amen. And after you've done that, let's read now what happens to us with our mind. What's the address? Romans 6. Are we okay? Yes. Let's read. Romans 6.22. Read with life. Go. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves to God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness. You have your fruit of holiness and in the end, everlasting life. To your destination. Is that very clear? Good. Now, we'll finish with sin. Let's go to the world systems very quickly. The systems of the world, meaning the values of the world, the conduct of the world, the standards of the world, the philosophies of the world, are done with Satan's control. Nothing in the world, it may look plausible, it may look shiny, it's of the devil. Can I prove it to you? Yes. Write this down for me. Colossians 2.8. Colossians 2.8. Colossians 2.8. It is written. Amen. Don't let anyone lead you where? Astray. Say, repeat with me. Don't let anyone lead me astray. Go. Astray. With empty philosophy. With empty philosophy. And high sounding nonsense. And high sounding nonsense. That comes from human thinking. And from the evil powers of this world, and, from the evil of this world. And, not and not from Christ. And not from Christ. You see that? It's self explanatory. What's the problem? Okay. So, what is the antidote or what are the things that will help you to overcome the world system? The key thing is to make God my number one in every area of my life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally, uh, occupationally, um, uh, recreationally, materially, financially. Make God number one in that nine areas. In the nine areas. That's it. So, let's read how your faith now is the first thing you can use. And you can use any one of these to overcome the world system. What's the address? First John chapter 5 verse 4 and 5. Let's read together. Go. For every child of God defeats this evil world by trusting Christ to give the victory. And who can win this battle against the world? Do you hear that? Who can win this battle against the world? Who can win this battle against the world? Who can win this battle? You see the answer? Let's read together. Oh, no, some. Wait a minute. Some children. 90%. Read with me now. Go, 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 go. All the ones who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, when I trust Him and believe in Him, I win the war. Okay. Number two. Make God number one priority. B. Your focus should be where? Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Your focus is not on New Life Fellowship. Your focus is not on a preacher. Your focus is not on other things. These things are just things that disrupt. Your focus is Christ and Christ alone. Amen. Is that true? Yes. What's, the, what's the address? Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Can we read it together? Go. Let us run with endurance. The race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from start to finish. What is that keeping our eyes? They are talking of the eyes of faith. They are talking about we each have spiritual eyes. You have natural eyes to see the natural world, but you also have spiritual eyes to see spiritual things. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, beside, be excited. Be excited. You have spiritual eyes. Or eyes of faith. Third thing. So not only shall we make 
um, Christ number one with what? With what? Faith. Amen? The second is our focus. And the last one is what? Huh? The last one is what? Love. Love. L-O-V. See, many people tell you they love God. But I, I put this verse for a purpose. How many people have seen God with their naked eyes? Nobody in the world. You see God by seeing, doing things to people. You love God by loving people. We always talk about loving God. I love God. I love God. If you don't love people whom you see, how can you love God whom you do not there? Is that not in the Bible? Okay. So, I chose this verse that you love others more than anything else. I didn't say more than yourself. More than anything else. Where is the address? Philippians 1, 9, 9 to 11. Amen. Can somebody help me read that? Please. It is Amen. Amen. Yeah, the verse that he read says, "It is God working where." Please, it is God working where. Amen. Not you. Is God working where? Amen. And God is giving you His desires, not your desires. We've seen what desires is a, is is a total madhouse. We read it in Galatians five nineteen twenty one. The kind of things that our desires produce evil desires. Nothing good comes from within. Paul said it. It's true for him. It's true for us. Amen? Amen. So it is God working in you, giving you his desires to obey him. You and I don't have the capacity to obey God like he wants. Right. And finally, he gives you the power. He gives you the power to please him. So I cannot please God in my own power. I cannot. God's is asking you to do things with perfection. So you need his perfection to do what he wants you to do. Did you get that? Yes. Don't ever say, I'll do this for God. You're wasting time. God doesn't accept your standards and my standards. You do it with his standards because he's perfect. And he doesn't want anything which is less than. Perfect. Did you get this? Yes. Thank you. All right, let's continue. The last one, we've talked about how we overcome the sinful nature. We've talked about how we overcome the world. The last one is overcoming who? Satan. Amen? Why do we have to overcome Satan? Can you give me the address? Go. First Peter 5, 8. What does it say? Be careful. Watch out for attacks from the devil. You are great enemy. You see that? Continue. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for some victim to devour. He's come to steal, kill, destroy and right now he's deceiving the whole world so that he'll go in his camp. But you and you and you and you and me will not give him any room. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Now what does he do then? How does he go about? Do you see him with, the, with naked eyes? No. Mommy Grace said something here about um, our kids, they all grew up <laughs> the best way we could raise them, we leave them to God. Hallelujah. They saw the Bible man who had a, a devil come and he does whispering don't accept go to that place you'll be fine. He whispers things. What are things he whispers? 
tell me them. You whisper to your mind what? Thoughts, ideas, suggestions, imaginations, impressions, dreams, and visions. Where? Remember all battles. Natural, spiritual, are fought. And you win victory or lose the victory where? Okay. So, we put for you up um, the portrait of a Roman soldier. We told you that Paul drew his inspiration because he was in prison and he saw how with the attire that the Roman soldier wore and said, ah, in 2 Timothy we are told that we are soldiers of Christ. So you may not have gone into the natural army here of America like some people. Amen. Amen. But we are all enlisted in the army of the day you accepted Christ, you are in the army of the Lord. And your battalion doesn't fail. Some people, maybe their battalion, they went somewhere. And, mm, but God's army where he's leading always wins. Amen. So you're on the right side. We are victors and not? We are victors and not? We are victors and not? Victims. Because we are inscribed in the army of the Lord. You don't fight for victory. You fight from victory. Every battle you fight, you fight from victory. You already won. If I'm playing, even though I'm more than 75, I'm playing basketball with uh, my grandson. Uh, can he beat me? No. no. So go with that mindset. You always win. Always. Praise the Lord. So overcoming uh, the Satan now. Can we stand please as we look at this? Uh, seven things overcoming Satan solution biblical strategy first biblical but now <clears throat> it is not enough it is not enough it is not enough to say oh it is uh, the address is Ephesians 6 10 to 18 it's not enough even to say what it is it is enough to apply it in your life yes. so what I did here was the application of each of the uh, pieces Amen? Amen. So what's the first solution to the belt of truth? Memorize. Memorize a verse that combats the lies you struggle with. Some of us struggle, we struggle with very big lies. Look for a verse. Memorize that verse. It will kick out the lies that you believe. Amen? Amen. Can we continue? Yes. Quickly, go. Solution number two. The breastplate of what do I do? I hide God's word in my heart and live a life that aligns with God's standards of holiness. Number three, the shoe of of the gospel of peace. Go. Because you've made peace with God, you have the peace that enables you to live in peace, even around life storms. And by and be God's ambassador to reconcile the world to God through Jesus Christ. Does that make sense, everyone? Yes. The moment you receive Christ, you have the peace of God that transcends everything. Your heart, your mind, it goes beyond those things. It transcends. That's what the peace of God does for you. And because you have that peace, you can now extend that peace to others so that they too can be reconciled to. Are we okay? Yes. Children, am I long? Thank you. All right, let's continue here. The shoe of peace, we've, we've talk, dealt with that. Number four, shield of faith. faith. Very quickly, we have our faith in God does what? Shields us from all doubts and fears. You are ready to defeat Satan's darts of doubts, snares, unbelief, and deceit. You are able to deflect all fiery darts of the enemy. With what? With your faith. You see why faith is fundamental? Yes. Everything is built on faith. Can we continue? Number five, very quickly. Helmet of? This is what gives you identity. Many people believe that they can lose their salvation. But I have come here to tell you the good news. How you can never lose your salvation. It's not, by, it's not just by speaking. Every morning when you get up, you say, Lord, control my, my life. Amen? Amen? You put your hand in God's hand. Say that prayer every day. And anybody who meets you and tells you you lose your salvation, I don't want to say it. 
You surrender your life to God every day. Take. Lead me. Will God say, I will not take the hand? So you can never be afraid that you lose your salvation. I, came, I come from Africa where we preach all kinds of terrible doctrines. I speak about the salvation. Salvation is your identity that gives you eternal life. Amen? Amen. So we in this church, we believe that we'll do the right thing. Every morning, what do I do? I give my hand to the Lord and say, lead me, control me, be at the steering wheel of my car. And it will take you to a ditch, right? No. Okay. Can we read Helmet of Salvation? Go. A helmet protects our thoughts from harmful thoughts, ideas, suggestions, imaginations, impressions, dreams, and visions. And secures, secures, secures our salvation and our identity in Christ. Who are you? I'm in Christ. We'll see it from the month, next month, what's the next month? July. We'll have a whole series on SHAPE. S-H-A-P-E. A whole series. You will love it. Praise the name of Jesus. Next. The sword of the spirit. The word of God. What do I do? I use the two-edged sword of, of your word to reject, demolish, and expose the tempting words of Satan. Amen? Again, Jesus is an example there. In um, Matthew 4, 1 to 11, we have the whole story of how Jesus was tempted. Amen? You know where he got his power from? From Deuteronomy 8, 3. From Psalm 91, 11 and 12. Deuteronomy 6, 16. And Deuteronomy 6, 13. Jesus was quoting those passages from the Old Testament. Amen? Amen. He didn't say, look, devil, I made you. I was there for, what would I talk about? He quoted scripture. You cannot do any less. Don't use your mouth and say, oh, uh, my, stop. It will not work. Use the word of God. Amen. Jesus used it and he succeeded. Will you say amen? amen? Next, solution number seven. Prayer. Prayer is used where you put on each piece. But prayer stands by its own. On Wednesday, we studied the seven areas of prayer. Can you remember them? Can we go? The term stands for what? Praise, worship, adoration of who? God. This stands for thanksgiving. You thank God for who, for who he is, and especially for what he has done. Next is confession. Right? We all sin. We commit sins of omission and commission. Very important. Then this is your petition. You pray for other people, not only you. You are not selfish anymore. You pray for others. And here you pray for yourself. See how big the fingers are. Yes. See how you pray less for yourself and more for others. Yes. Confession is number one because you've seen every day, I've seen every day. Thanksgiving and that. And finally, these two. What is this? Inside. Listening. Listening. Conversation is a two way conversation, right? Yes. So when God speaks, I. Listen. And when I'm speaking, God is. Listen. And then this is consecration. Seven. These are the seven areas of prayer that God has given this church. If you look at books and I've looked at them, you won't find all of them. They are given in this church. Not because we, we are better than any other people, because of God's grace for us. Amen. Have you understood? Yes. So, prayer. Praying in the spirit. Let's read together. Go. Maintain an ongoing conversation with God by making known your needs and by interceding for fellow believers as well as those need. Is that clear enough? Yes. That's prayer wrapped up. It should be spirit led. In this church, we don't pray amiss. We make sure, we do what? We make sure that we use the word of God to lead us in our prayers. Because the word of God was spoken by the spirit of God. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Now, there's the recruitment. Say, Lord, Lord. Help, me help me to be intentional. To be intentional, to be intentional, to be intentional. about my Christian life. I will, no I will no longer play around. I'll put this number one priority. Okay. First, you have what? Go on, read it together. First, your love letter. What's your love letter? The Holy Bible. What's your love letter? Your Bible. What's your love letter? Your Holy Bible. 
Next, you have what? A journal. Amen? A journal tells me your history. Many of these people that we don't know of, they are journals. They wrote things and put said, oh, this guy lived and this is what happened in his life. What is your history with God? Turn to somebody and said, my brother, my sister. My brother, my sister. What is your history with God? Where is your journal? If you don't have it, tell him I'll go and buy it after this. Come on. Tell him. All right. Now, read that for me. Go. In your journal, write down. You do what? Write down. You see, here in the church, as I told somebody, uh, a pastor has no powers. In school, when I was a professor, ooh, I'll ask you to see the test. You don't get it, then you get zero. You fail the class. But here... Yeah, I beg. God help us. Oh, I wish we were enrolled in my university in those days, but that's all right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. In your journal, write this. What God told you in your time of what? Meditation. meditation. Give your neighbor a high five that I'll do meditation. The right way, the right way, the right way, the right way. Number two. Number two, I look for a verse to memorize. Say it. I'll look for a promise to claim. I'll look for a command to obey. I'll look for a sin to confess. And then finally, I will take that book, open it up, open it up. Now, if after this, my daughter Lovett doesn't have one, call me, all right? We'll show her paper. On that page, you write a column. On your left side are your prayer requests and the prayer requests of others. On your right side are the answers to your prayers. That shows you clearly that you have a history with God. That shows you clearly that you are intentional. Amen. You are intentional about what? About be a follower of Christ. Please, let's leave the jokes aside. This is the most serious business you are in. The business with God. Amen? Amen. Select a page devoted for prayer requests and their answers. In your diary, jot down your to-do list of things you plan to accomplish that day. Amen? Amen? Now, I'd like us to read the last thing. And here is one thing that I want to say. Uh, I'll say it quickly here, but on Wednesday I'll explain more. When the Bible says that you are a fool, is it the same like when the Bible, when people in the world say you are a fool? No. Ah. Wow. You see, when the people say you are a fool in the world, they're saying you're stupid. Yes. Right? Yes. You're an idiot. You, are, you don't blah, 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 blah. But when the Bible says you are a fool, it's saying you are not obeying the word of God and you don't live by the truth. Very simple. We are truth obeyers. Also, I'm a truth obeyer. So when I obey the truth, then I'm not a fool. Remember the guy who built up bands and said, oh, now I can eat. And death came and said, today I take your life. It's not because he was stupid. He built bands. That was smart. So let's be careful about this. And I'm saying this be, be, by, by intentionally incorporating these practices in your daily life, you will be rooted in Christ and bear fruits of what? Righteousness. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. James 1.22 says, Remember to obey the commands of the Lord, not just to listen to them. If you don't obey, you are only fooling yourself. You are only doing what? From today, I will not fool myself. From today. And then, we remember, righteousness, peace, Joy in the Holy Ghost. 
righteousness, peace, and in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God.